In this video, we'll be going over the solutions to the Unit 7 test. Um, after you view it, you can use the video to help you um, do your makeup test, or you can do it use it to help you do gamas for the ones that you missed. So here in question 1, and Unit 7 just focus on right triangles. So question 1 was checking that you could use the Pythagorean theorem to find a missing site. Remember when you're using the Pythagorean theorem, um, your C is always your hypotenuse. So here my C would be my hypotenuse. So I'm going to plug in into A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A and B, it doesn't matter which ones you use. I'll use A is 9 and B is 12. And we're going to solve for the missing side C. So here I get 81 plus 144. If I add those together, I get 225. And then um, anytime you're using Pythagorean theorem, your last step is to square root. So your answer would be the square root of 225, which is equal to 15. This next question is similar. We're using the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the missing side. This time, though, instead of giving us our C, which would have been our hypotenuse, they're um, asking for A. So I'm going to put A squared. This can be my B. 8 squared is 64. 10 squared is 100. This one's different because our numbers are on different sides. So since they're on different sides, we're going to subtract them instead of add them together. So I would actually do minus 64 to both sides. So I get a squared equals 36. And just like with the other Pythagorean theorem problem, your last step is going to be to take the square root. So your answer is going to be the square root of 36 which is equal to 6. This next question wants us to classify a triangle um, with the side lengths of 9, 12, and 15 using the Pythagorean theorem. When you do this, you'd actually write it with c squared in front. And c squared needs to be your hypotenuse. So c needs to be the hypotenuse or the longest side. So in this case, our C would be 15. 9 and 12 can be our A and B. Here I'm just squaring my numbers. Then I can add those together. Here on both sides, I get 225. When you're classifying, you want to check how these numbers compare. So since these are equal, this is going to be a right triangle. Because Pythagorean theorem is used for right triangles. On question four, we're doing the same thing. We're going to classify triangle. Remember, C has to be your longest side. So here my C would be seven. And then for A and B, I'll use the other two sides. 7 squared is 49. 4 squared is 16. 6 squared is 36. If you add those together, you get 52. So this one's different because we didn't get the same number on both sides. So here we have to compare them. So it's not equal to. 49 is actually less than 52. Since it's less than, this is going to be an acute triangle. So remember, um, when we had learned this, we learned that obtuse would be greater than, acute is less than, and right would be equal to. Here on the next question, um, they're asking us to solve for x using the rules of a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So here, we want to know what side x is. Is it the hypotenuse or the leg? Since it's across the 90 degree angle, x is our hypotenuse. So we're going to use the formula for hypotenuse. So hypotenuse 
equals short leg times square root of 2. Here our short leg is 25. So I'm going to plug that in. So my answer is going to be 25 square root of 2. And that's all we had to do for this problem. Just plug it in. Those of you that got this one wrong, um, since the answers were kind of all scattered, um, I could tell you just didn't know what to do with it. But here was basically plugging into the formula. Question 6 said to solve for x. So again, I'm going to look at my hypotenuse. Here my hypotenuse is 100. The side we want to know x would be our short leg. Or just our leg. So here, um, if we want to get our x, we're going to use the formula for short leg, which is hypotenuse divided by square root of 2. And in this picture, our hypotenuse is 100. So we're doing 100 divided by square root of 2. Now here, you had to do an extra step. Um, some students just didn't know what to do with this. Remember, we learned that you don't want a square root in the denominator. So I'm going to take 100 divided by square root of 2. And I'm going to multiply it by root 2 over root 2. On the top, you just put them together. And on the bottom, we had learned root 2 over root 2 is just 2. So then at the very end, you can divide these numbers, 100 by 2. This comes out to 50, and you have square root of 2 there at the end of your answer. So again, just a side note, we had learned you do not want a square root in the denominator. And then so what we did was we multiplied it by root 2 over root 2. Another thing you had to remember is anytime you do square root of 2 times square root of 2, that equals 2. So several things that you had to know to be able to do this problem. Our next problem, we're going to solve for x. So here x is across the 90, so it's our hypotenuse. So remember the formula for hypotenuse is the short leg times square root of 2. And here the short leg is um, 5 root 2. So we're doing 5 root 2 times root 2. And remember, just like in the previous question, anytime you have root 2 times root 2, that equals 2. So this problem becomes 5 times 2, which is 10. Again, those of you that missed this problem, it just seemed like you didn't know um, what to do with it. The next question, um, 8 moves on to 30, 60, 90 triangles. Here they want us to solve for x and y. Here x is our hypotenuse. 11 would be our short leg, and y would be our long leg. So I'm going to start with the hypotenuse. The formula for hypotenuse is 2 times the short leg. So 2 times 11 is 22, and that would be the answer for x. The only answer that had x equal to 22 was the first one. Now, if you wanted to find the long leg, the formula is short leg times square root of 3. So it would have been 11 times square root of 3, or just 11 root 3. On question 12, we're solving for x. Here, um, 30 is across the 90, so that would be my hypotenuse. And x is the shorter leg. There's two formulas for short leg. So you need to decide which one you're going to use. Since we know the hypotenuse, I'm going to use the one that has the hypotenuse in it. So short leg equals hypotenuse divided by 2. So 30 divided by 2 is equal to 15. Now, a lot of students that got this wrong put 30 square root of 3. So what I'm thinking some students did um, was they did the formula long leg equals short leg times square root of 3. And for some reason, um, did 30 times root 3. It's very important that you label the sides. Here, the long leg was not used at all.
On this next problem, we're solving for y. So y would be here. So our hypotenuse is a side we don't know because that's across the 90. So y is our short leg and 21 root 3 is our long leg. So we're finding the short leg. Remember, there's two formulas for short legs. We have to use the one we want to use. Um, since we know the long leg, I'm going to choose a formula that has the long leg in it. So short equals long divided by square root of 3. Here my long leg is 21 root 3. I'm going to divide that by root 3. This one um, is nice because anytime you have the same thing on the top and on the bottom, they cancel. So here's square root of 3 and square root of 3 cancel, and we're just left with 21. So that would be our answer. A lot of students put 7 square root of 3 as the answer. I'm thinking what they did is they wanted to do 21 divided by 3. But you cannot do that because it's not 3, it's a square root. So since 21 doesn't have a square root, you couldn't divide those. They're not like terms. Y'all can use this video or the PDF I upload to help you on the makeup test or to Duke and Moss um, to bring that test grade a little higher.